Hey, it's me, GV, and welcome to a guide on how to beat Risk of Rain Returns for basically your first victory if you have yet to beat this game and are looking for any help on how to actually get a victory. I am here to lead you to victory. This is going to be for a single player, no cheese or BS or any crap like that. Just basically beating the game in a legitimate way, uh, albeit an easier way. Because we're going to be using the Huntress, which is unlocked from the start. The Huntress is extremely proficient at kiting, running, and firing while remaining unhurt. I also recommend keeping the starting skills as well. These skills are cool, but the starting skills, in my opinion, are better. This is going to be on normal difficulty or rainstorm. No artifacts. Basically, just a standard victory. How do we achieve it in Risk of Rain Returns? So... Let's start by talking about our objective. We are looking immediately for the teleporter. Uh, as you can see in the bottom there where it says find the teleporter. We want to find the teleporter ASAP. And what that looks like is a little red pronged thing uh, on the ground. You'll know it when you see it. And uh, yeah, we want to find that ASAP. I was going to say A immediately, but I said A ASAP. Along the way, you want to keep out an eye for chests and things like this. So this is an imp statue. And basically, if you use this and kill the five imps, you will um, be rewarded with a guaranteed item, which the Huntress makes super easy with the laser glaive, as you can see there. So guaranteed item here, which is tough times, reducing coming damage by 14%. I'm not a big fan of defensive items myself. I would always pretty much prefer offensive items, but that's just my play style. You might be completely different. Uh, we do have a chest up there to the top right. So we're going to remember that and try to go all the way to the left here and see if our teleporter is here whilst we're killing enemies to get some extra money. There's a drone on the ground. I usually put drones behind chests in terms of priority. So we're going to try to get these Lemurians killed and then open up this chest where we get a Topaz brooch, kills te uh, grant a temporary barrier. Any containers you find, like the one we just opened, is basically just free money. So you want to pop those suckers open. And uh, yeah, basically we still have not found the teleporter. So that is still our primary goal. And while we're doing that, I will discuss the abilities of the Huntress. So basically, yeah, she has the ability to kite, which makes her super duper, 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 like a lot easier than other characters, I feel like, for the most part. Because um, basically what that means is you can be moving and firing and she'll basically auto aim, which is huge. Because compared to other characters, you have to basically fire in one direction. It's a lot harder. So her normal attack, which I've switched my LT and RT buttons, so don't get confused. Voltaic Mitt, which isn't too great, just electrifies the... Uh, ropes that we climb on uh we have another 50 chest here so ideally we get some kills and are able to get that while we're still searching for the teleporter um yeah so her normal ability just fires arrows so you basically want to always be holding that down pretty much at all times to be firing arrows at your enemies her LT um, is Laser Glaive. Basically, she throws a Laser Glaive that will bounce between enemies. The last hit will deal extra damage, so keep that in mind. We're going to kill this guy, and then we're going to go grab that chest that we passed. Uh, or this tree will work, too. Or this jellyfish will work. Basically, anything that wants to die can die. Okay, thank you. Let's go open this up and hope to get a good item. We end up getting Jar of Wisps, or Will of the Wisp, chance to detonate enemies on kill, uh, which is actually really good. Definitely want that. There is a drone on the ground for 10 more gold than what we have, so we can maybe farm a little bit in order to grab that. So as you can see, I'm mainly trying to find the teleporter, but I'm also stopping along the way to get certain things if I can, uh, just to make it a little bit easier once we find the teleporter to get in and get out. So where is this teleporter? This is getting a little long now. Ooh, interesting. So here we have the challenge of the mountain, which if we activate, there will now be two bosses instead of one. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and activate that because that means we get two items instead of one. And honestly, you want to really push the risk in this game. I mean, risk is in the very name after all. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and activate the Challenge of the Mountain. Now, we've covered pretty much the whole left side of the map, so we know the teleporter is most likely on the right side somewhere. 
So let's head to the right and see. There's also going to be these, like, red particles. Which will designate where the, um, where the teleporter is going to be as well. So we're looking for any sort of, like, red particles or the teleporter itself. Which is, like I said, a red pronged thing on the ground. This is actually getting to be very long. Here's our starting uh, escape pod. So it's probably to the right somewhere. Because we explored most of the left. Let's go ahead and open up this chest. Where we get a red item. Thallium. Chance to slow and damage enemies over time. Fantastic. We have another one. Let's see if we get five gold here. Yeah, so pretty good start item-wise. Fire shield retaliate on taking heavy damage. Pretty good start item-wise. Pretty slow start teleporter-wise. There's our teleporter. So, we have to be careful now because there's going to be two bosses instead of one. And basically what I'm going to be doing is moving constantly, throwing out all my abilities when I can. And uh, just, yeah, constantly moving left to right and jumping, basically. So let's see which boss we get. We don't want Magma Worm. Colossus is fine. Magma Worm is like the hardest boss uh, for the starting zones. Okay, so we're basically, like I said, just going to be moving left to right, constantly throwing out our abilities when we can, and constantly jumping as well to avoid any and all hits. Uh, and yeah, Laser Glaive is going to do big damage here because it's going to bounce between our enemies. Also, our ultimate, which is the uh, explosive bomb sort of thing. We're also going to repair the drone that fell down there. You can see the double Colossus's health at the top there. Here, we're going to do a bomb here. Nice, big bomb there. Oh, we had the Jar of Wisps activator, Will of the Wisps or whatever. Okay, that's one Colossus down. That's two Colossus. Did we get another Thallium? Oh, wow. Okay, we got another red Thallium. That's kind of crazy. Okay, so, yeah. As you can see, you really want to push the risks um, because we just had a huge upswing. And basically, you're just trying to survive while the teleporter is activating. And while this is happening, we're going to go look for some more chests up here, baby. We find a shrine, which is a chance to get two different items. We get the backup, which is pretty big. Uh, it is a use item that we can use, we can press B with. And we're going to keep playing this and hope for one more before the money starts to outrank us. We get the... Okay. This is a very good start. We get the golden gun, which um, I think increases the amount of damage we deal the more money we have. So, yeah, uh, we can, which is really good because a lot of the time you won't end up using money and it just stocks up. And then especially in the final level, if you have like a ton of money, you'll be able to deal a lot of DPS. And once you're ready to go, you want to hit the teleporter. Now, if you have a ton of money and have not picked up a lot of chests, then you want to go back and like find other chests and stuff before you move on. However, because we took so long to find the teleporter... We already found the majority of the chests on the level, so we didn't really need to care about that. Okay, so now we moved on to level two, and again, we are going to try to find the teleporter ASAP, uh, whilst also getting kills when we can. Uh, I'm assuming that little bar to the left is how much gold we have. The higher the bar fills, the more damage we're dealing. Uh, the more gold that we have, the higher the bar fills. But you probably still want to grab items. I'm going to grab one of these here by killing these guys. Uh, we need one more kill to grab one. Um, defensive choice, kind of mad choice, and then a chance to bleed on hit, which might be able to deal some decent DPS. So we'll keep that in mind. I think you still want to buy as much as you can. Um, and then just any excess, you want the golden gun. You want to go to the golden gun, basically. So, let's see if we can get one more kill on a monster, if a monster would spawn, but there ain't no monster spawning. Uh, yeah, it's actually really quiet. Does any monster want to spawn so I can grab this? That'd be pre pretty freaking sweet. There you, there we go. Alright, so let's kill this guy. Uh, so I didn't mention LB is blink, where basically you blink, um, that's pretty much it. Gonna grab this rusty knife, chance to bleed on hit. Um, and so, yeah, that's our movement skill. Not the best movement skill in Risk of Rain, but, you know, it lets you get certain places. It's aight. Uh, and then our ultimate is, like, bomb arrow where we fire... Oh, okay, so you can see some particles to the bottom left, right? That means our teleporter's over there. I think, yes, it does. Um, I haven't, like, fully confirmed that yet, but it looks like it does. 
Okay, so since we found it early, we're going to go ahead and activate it. And we're going to press B to call in our drones. And we've got the Magma Worm. So Magma Worm you don't want to see because Magma Worm is kind of annoying to fight. Basically, it will come up and then come down. And so you're looking for the arrow on the bottom. And you're looking to deal some big damage to it when you can. Um, but it's kind of hard because you have to time it correctly. But yeah, Magma Worm is kind of super annoying to fight here. Uh, so we're going to try to land a bomb arrow on it when it comes up from underneath the ground. Just like that, you can see the huge damage. And we're going to try to blink away when it uh, lands. Ooh, beautiful. We got the burning witness. The worm's eye seems to still see watching or whatever. Yeah, so we got the boss's unique item as well, which is great. Uh, I think it leaves fire on the ground, which will damage enemies. I don't, I'm not sure exactly what it does. Uh, anyways, we're going to go play the shrines now. So we got unlucky there. We got unlucky there. Uh, we've got the foreign fruit, which we're going to use because it'll heal us, but then switch back to the um, the backup since the drones are nice. And then we're going to find, I believe there was another shrine over here because this is going to be cheaper now. And we're going to fail it. And we're going to fail it again. And we're going to get the Harvester Scythe critical hits heal you. So yeah, we did. We spent most of our money on shrines um, in this particular level, but that's fine. You can see the Thallium DPS is crazy too. Uh, and then we've got another freaking use item, the Samarang. So we're getting a lot of use items this playthrough, which is not good, because once you have a good use item, you're pretty much set. But anyways, let's go to the third level, the Sunken Tombs. This is the underwater level. I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, because it's a water level. And if you're a video gamer, you have to not like water levels, right? Um, side note, if you go to the top right of this level and you find a crate and open the crate and kill the boss, you'll be able to unlock a character. Fun little fact there. But, uh, yeah, I don't like this level. And honestly, if you don't like the level, you want to find the teleporter ASAP. I mean, you always pretty much do, but more incentive to find the teleporter if you're not a fan of the level. Uh, in fact, let's go see if that crate is over here. Uh, it's not every time. And we have a healing item here, so let's make sure to grab that real quick. Uh, but yeah, the explosive arrow, which I didn't really talk about. Basically, you fire an explosive arrow and it drops some bombs down, which is really nice for AoE damage. Here we get infusion, which is great. Killing an enemy permanently increases your health. You want that as early as possible. Um, okay, and we get another, yeah, we'll take that, the disposable missile launcher. Alright, so the crate is here, which means we'll open this up and spawn Acrid. And Acrid, uh, I'm not sure if Acrid gives you anything if you kill it, but we're gonna go ahead and use our use item, the missile launcher, to hopefully deal a lot of damage. And then basically, once again, we're just gonna be moving from left to right here, uh, dropping our bomb arrows when possible, dropping our laser glaives when possible. Hopefully applying as many stacks as... Ooh, look at that thallium, yeah. Hopefully applying as many stacks of that thallium as we possibly can. So yeah, this is basically just a bonus boss. I don't know if you actually get anything from uh, killing them. I played the shrine there and I got the boxing gloves chance to knock enemies back for extra damage. Something is healing Acrid, which I don't like. One of these enemies is healing Acrid, which is not cool. Um, but... They are almost dead. Come on. There we go. Uh, ooh, yes. Ceremonial Dagger. Killing an enemy fires spirit bolts. Okay, so you do get items from killing Acrid. Good to know. So Acrid doesn't spawn every time. So if you're here on the sunken tombs level, just keep an eye out for Acrid. Because you apparently will get a guaranteed item. Which is nice. Uh, and now, once again, we are looking for our teleporter. We got another fire shield. This is a random item. Um, I should have grabbed it immediately. We would have gotten more spiritual daggers, but that's fine. We're going to get the red whip, which moves you fast out of combat. And here's the little blips. So we know our teleporter is close. And it's right there. So let's go ahead and activate it. And as our boss, we have the Colossus times two. So sometimes it'll spawn two bosses uh, if it's like an easy boss or so. Who is heal? There's like a little healer. I think it's that. Oh, God, this is kind of scary, actually. Yeah, I think that um, bouncing ball is healing the enemies, which is not good. Uh, so we're going to back up a little bit. 
You can see our DPS is pretty good, especially with the daggers and everything. Okay, I think we got the healing ball killed. That thing was super annoying. All right, so once again, we're just jumping. We're moving left to right. We're firing our skills when we have them. The damage, the difficulty is constantly increasing. Uh, we got, we're constantly looking at our HP, by the way. And yeah, this game is just really hard to land your abilities where you want to. Because, like, if I could just land the bomb arrow on the Colossuses every time, that would be far easier. You get the mortar tube, chance to launch a mortar. And our DPS is going to get super high because of the golden gun. Now, we want to go find some chests because we have 2,000 gold. And keep in mind, our gold resets after every level, which means... It's not going to be doing anything for us once we use the teleporter. So we're going to go look for some gold. Or look for some chests to spend gold on. While still getting kills when we can. Uh, you don't want to spend too much time getting these kills. Ooh, if we could get a third Thallium, that would be sick. Okay, so the teleporter event is done, but we need to find some chests. So that's where the red whip is nice. Because the red whip will move you very fast outside of combat. So there's one chest where we get the ukulele, which has a chance to, like, electrify enemies. Pretty cool. Can we find any other chests? There's one here where we get tough times, reducing coming damage by 14%. Another chest here where we get smart shopper enemies drop extra gold. That's going to be a big meh. Uh, but yeah, having the red whip is really nice. It's also a Maple Story reference if anybody... Knows what Maple Story is. Uh, there's a lot of Maple Story references in this game, actually, which is kind of interesting. Uh, so let's go this way. Whoops, that was a mistake. Luckily, there is no falling damage. Oh, there's falling damage, but there's no falling off the map damage, is what I'm trying to say. All right, so let's head back up top to the left. I think we must go this way to get back to the teleporter. We. Uh, I think there was a chest over here. Nope, but there is a drone. Okay, so I'm not sure if going this way is going to let us get back. Nope. It is definitely not. So let's use this and go back up here and then go back up here. Unfortunately, a thousand gold's a little high to have before you move on, but there's nothing really that we can do. We probably did miss like one or two chests or drones, but... It's not the end of the world. Moving on to the fourth level. Uh, and all extra gold does turn into experience, but honestly, it's not that much. Uh, we can recycle drones here, which if you recycle six, you do unlock a character. But I am going... Yeah, actually, I am going to recycle them because you get random items. Uh, Will of the Wisp is great. And basically, if you get multiple of the same item, it just kind of stacks on itself. Um, you know, this is a game where items do stack. Okay, so we've got the Hive Cluster now, which is kind of good. Um, high chance of the, uh, what's it called, the uh, the Toxic Beast to spawn, which is a very easy boss. And there is our Teleporter right off the bat. You can see that Thallium doing work right there. So let's go for the Teleporter, and we're going to have the Toxic Beast. Yep, and there will be an indicator on the right of our map to show us where the Toxic Beast is. Uh, basically, the Toxic Beast will just spawn babies on the floor, and that's all that it really does. And then it does, like, stomping damage. So we don't really... The Toxic Beast is quite an easy boss to deal with for the most part. So we're going to try to get over to it. We just don't want to take stomping damage from it. And then here's good because we can basically shoot at it from afar. But yes, it will spawn, like, a million of these little uh, babies that you have to watch out for. But basically, we can just fire at it. Looks like there's two Toxic Beasts. Yes. So we have a multiple... We have multiple bosses here. Okay, let's go over here. Get this Toxic Beast killed. Beautiful. We're going to use our Missile Launcher every time it's up. Deal some extra damage. Toxic Beast is almost dead. Down it goes. Want to make sure to grab the item. Leeching Seed. Attacking enemies heals you. Fantastic for the Huntress since you're always attacking. And then we've got another Toxic Beast... So let's go find that one. Uh, and I am pretty slow. That's the annoying thing about this level is you get slowed by all the crap. Uh, another red whip. Move faster outside of combat. And there's our other toxic beast. So let's try to play this shrine. 
while we're whittling this toxic beast down. Took a ton of damage there. So I want to be very careful. Okay, always watching my HP to see if I get too low to where I have to back out. Okay, this little bird is being super annoying. Missile launcher should do the trick. Down goes the toxic beast. We get the bitter root. And I guess we'll just play the shrine a couple more times. Or once. Uh, yeah. We didn't really get that many items, which I'm kind of worried about a little bit. These balls are so annoying. Yeah, they just jump all over the damn place. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's try to go find a chest. There was a thing of the mountain here, which could have uh, given us another item or more, but that's fine. Uh, let's go over here to the right. We're just basically looking for any chest to spend our money on. But keep in mind, again, that as you're moving along, the game is getting constantly harder. Uh, let's see. Nothing. Let's climb up these. Yeah, you can see just how fast you move with two red whips outside of combat. You are zooming. Uh, fun fact, there is also a secret on this map. It's basically like at least one secret per map, pretty much. Um, I saw something up there that we could buy if we can actually get up there. Uh, yeah, there's if you go to like the middle right of this map, basically, um, there is like a bloated survivor that will give you a special item. Ooh, nice. Okay. So, it's also good to kill once you have Infusion, which we picked up, because Infusion will increase the uh, amount of HP you have permanently, which is why our HP bar is red now. Alright, let's go ahead and get the heck out of here. Uh, if you want to trigger Red Whip, that would be great. Alright, on to the fifth level the penultimate level, the Temple of the Elders. So the fifth level is always the Temple of the Elders. And basically, this one is weird. Um, there are golden chests that will basically take up all of your money. Uh, and there's also normal chests as well. So that one's 600. Probably don't really care about items at this point. Uh, I'm going to say. Um, you probably more so want the golden gun damage. But let's go ahead and get all these guys dead. Maybe open up this uh, random item over here. Okay, come on. Birds are so annoying. Okay, give me all of your monies. Appreciate it. Uh, so for this one, you have to time it. It's kind of tricky. Uh, anyways, let's go to the right over here. So yeah, Temple of the Elders is weird. Um, basically, the teleporter is usually like all the way to the right or all the way to the left. It's, usually, it's much more linear, pretty much. So you can see we're going like all the way over here. Uh, 600, we're close to another item. Let's hope that we get lucky with like a red item. I'm gonna use this because these things are just so annoying. Okay. Uh, so we did get a red item. Br Brilliant Behemoth, all your attacks explode. That's actually huge. So you can see, like, yeah, there is good reason to... Is good reason to still get items at this stage of the game. Um, if it's something like that. But obviously that was luck-based. Okay, let's go up here and open that. And we're looking for our... Let's also get this here, too. Okay, we got the Royal Medallion Bosses Drop Powerful Buffing Wisps when hit. Not sure if that actually counts for the, um... Not sure if that actually counts for the final boss, because if it does for the final boss, that's actually huge. Okay, here's our final teleporter. It is huge. Let's go ahead and activate and see what we get. It's going to be three Imp Overlords, um, which should be okay. They're going to be throwing out attacks constantly, so we want to be moving around the map constantly. Okay. This is kind of weird because they're in that very weird spot. So we have a lot of healing. We have a lot of DPS. We should theoretically be okay, but I'm still kind of worried about the final boss. So we're just going to move over here to the right. And uh, yeah, all of our attacks explode. Man, if only we had Heaven Cracker. That would be amazing. Basically, every time you fire four attacks, it, like, pierces through everything. Really good on the Huntress. Uh, we should have killed one of the Imp Overlords, but I don't see an item anywhere. So I'm not really sure. There might still be three? 
Oh, Harvester's Scythe, okay. Getting a critical heals this, basically. Alright, so again, we're throwing out all of our stuff. We're constantly jumping. We're constantly looking at our HP. We do have some healing drones, so we should be okay. Every time our use item is up, we're using it. Uh, we should have another item here, and it is the crowbar. Deal extra damage to healthy enemies. And then the med kit. We didn't get too many great boss items, but that's fine. Um, we should be able... Uh, we could try to look for a golden chest, or we could just go to the final level. Uh, yeah, let's let's look, because we, we have so much gold. We might as well try to find... There's some golden chests in this final stage, uh, which will give you quite good items. But I don't really want to go across the entire map to find it. So we may cut that short. Let's climb these chains. See if there's anything up here, perhaps. There is a utility thing over here. Go ahead and open that, but it's usually, if not every time, a use item. Um, this kind of sucks, because we do want to spend this money that we have here. But I don't know where... Yeah, I think we just head through. Teleport to the final level. And then finally, once this all this gold comes to us, we are at the Risk of Rain UES Contact Light. So basically, this level works a little bit different. Um, pretty much how it goes is you want to find the bridge of the ship, which should be this way somewhere. Uh, usually it's like to the right middle. So we're going to go, yeah, and then you have to find these blast doors where you have to survive for 30 seconds. Uh, good for us because we'll get gold, which will add to our golden gun. And it'll also give us, um infusion as well so every enemy we kill will increase our maximum health so yeah we do want to basically grind as much as possible to get that golden gun meter all the way up and we probably don't want to spend any money either but as you can see i can basically just face tank most of this okay we're getting a little low here let's be careful so it would be nice to find some drones so once we find this middle chasm here we can spend extra time. I'm going to go ahead and open up some chests, too. Mortar tube. We'll take it. Okay. And we've got some items over here as well. Let's go. Ooh, nice. Let's go for the lens crafter's glasses. Lens maker's glasses. Chance to deal double damage. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. We'll go ahead and use our missile launcher as well. And then, uh, yeah, basically we just want to grind to get our golden gun meter all the way up. So we're going to try to find some more doors to open. So let's head down here. Uh, fun fact as well, there is... Okay, I'm just making sure we don't die here. Fun fact as well, there is another uh, survivor to be unlocked on this level also. You basically want to find... Actually, I have a guide on the channel. If you look up the handy guide... H-A-N slash D. Uh, you can figure out how to unlock him if you need to. But it is on this level. Okay, so let's just keep dashing, dodging, ducking, diving, dodging. Okay, the door opens. Um, it might actually be in here. Okay, we have 3k gold. We can still grind more. Let's go this way. Let's explore a little bit. So yeah, basically we want to fill that golden gun meter all the way up. And then on top of that, we also want to open any extra chests we can get our hands on. Let's go down here real quick. Open this up. Okay. So in here, we have the storage room. Sometimes you spawn in here. We'll get key cards out of the golden containers. And then also we've got a chest over here. Which is going to have lens makers, glasses, fantastic chance to deal double damage. That is huge. Okay, we're going to open up all these and get this jellyfish killed. Yeah, you can see our DPS is quite nice, actually. And our golden gun thing is almost ready. I would imagine it's 5k. I don't actually know how much gold you need to max out the golden gun. Damage. Seems like it's around 5k, though. Yeah, it looks like we just about have as much as we need. All right, 
I would say now is a good time. I would say now is a good time to try and beat the game. So we're going to try to hold this off here. Try to rely on our damage and healing. And our spirit knives, as you can see. My god, they deal so much damage. And also our infusion, constantly, permanently increasing our maximum HP. Which is also really, really, really nice. Okay, four more seconds here to get back into the main central chasm. There we go. Uh, we might have to, have to open a couple more doors here, though. Yeah. So we could go and hunt for more chests. But I think now we're going to call it. So let's go this way. We're looking for the bridge. We're looking for something called the bridge. Let's open this. Got the head stompers, which is terrible. Um, let's open this as well. Got the bitter root. Okay, so here we go. I think we got to... Oh, yeah. So it says bridge here. So we got to deal with this twice. And then we have our final boss. It's been a long time coming. By long time, I mean 43 minutes. Okay, I'm just going to stand still and whack away at these guys to test my damage. Get more gold for the golden gun, although I think we're maxed out. Okay... Yeah, nothing can really touch us. We're doing pretty well here. Alright, that's door number one. And then we've got door number two. Just gotta stay alive for this much time. Uh, I'm going to save my uh, missile launcher usage here. Because it shouldn't take me... Shouldn't take me this long. We're actually almost at 1,000 HP. We're actually really close to hitting 1,000 HP. There is a uh, an achievement for, like, reaching 600 or so HP. I'm tempted to try to reach 1,000. Anyways, here we go. So once you hit the bridge. All right. Now, there's a lot to go over here. I'll do my best to explain how to beat this boss. Whew. Okay. So... Just try to watch as closely as possible. Um, as usual, you just basically want to be constantly moving, uh, firing all your stuff out. Uh, he's going to basically just do a lot of shock waves. Um, he's going to do a lot of shock waves, a lot of slash attacks. You want to just keep moving all the time. He'll also knock you up into the air. Uh, you want to get rid of the adds if you can. Uh, although he'll summon adds later on. Uh, when he does these purple rings, obviously do not stand in the purple rings. All right, we're going to move towards him here. You can see he does have multiple health bars, so obviously killing him here is not going to be the final the final fight. Fortunately, we never picked up a command banner item, which is great. Okay, so down goes phase one. Phase two, he's going to summon two giant worms. And basically, it's just like the magma worm fight where you want to be dealing as much damage with your bouncing laser glaives as possible and your explosive arrows. You can see we've already gotten them down to about half on their first uh, little um, curve here. And you can see, look how fast we're firing our arrows now. So one worm is already dead. That's the second worm dead. And now we've got the final phase, a challenge, he says. Uh, so he's going to spawn two robots. You want to take care of the robots immediately. And then same thing, just always be bouncing, always be avoiding. Get rid of the ads if there are any other ads, like this robot right here. Okay, down goes the ads. He's already at half health. We're doing pretty well. He's spawning more robots, so make sure to get those robots dead. Uh, he will spawn little copies of himself and then slam straight down. He'll also do shockwaves. Uh, we do have our missile launcher, so we're going to go ahead and use that. And you do not want to stay anywhere for too long. Uh, also, our drone is about to die, so we're going to repair it, which we just did. And we're super close to victory, and down goes Providence, ladies and gentlemen, is what I would say if that was actually the final part of the fight. However, there is one final part, and it's basically the same stuff, except now there's a giant green laser that you have to avoid as well. So, do not stand in the green laser. 
basically, is the name of the game. Uh, always be firing, always be dodging, and make sure to not stand in the giant green laser. If you see the giant green laser coming, start moving to avoid it. Because don't worry, he will chase you. Uh, so there's the giant green laser there. That's perfectly fine. We're going to use our missile launcher. Remember to use your U use items every time it's up. Always be firing. Always be firing. Always be attacking. Luckily, we've got a lot of HP. Okay. So now we are going to just stay in the safe zone. And he is going to go down for a second. Okay. This is kind of a weird spot. He'll also do these um, orbs which you want to um, dodge at the last second as well. Okay, so now this is not good. This is really not good. Oh my god, that was close. Okay, so now we need to be firing because we need to be dealing damage to him to heal. Okay, that was really not good. We were in a really bad spot. So yeah, obviously very RNG-based as well in terms of uh, if the green orb spawns on top of you. And down goes Providence. And now we have actually beaten the game. Whew, so there we go. That is Risk of Rain, how to beat the game. In my opinion, the easiest way. I've had the most consistency with the Huntress, personally. I hope this guide helps. I know it's a very long guide. Hopefully, some of those tips will stick. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. I'll do my best to answer. And, uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching. And I uh, wish you the best of luck. Bye-bye.